This step is going to focus on using smooth mesh preview and then smoothing. But in order to do that, we're going to create a glass flask with a cork in the top, kind of like you get um, potion flasks in fantasy games. So we'll create like a little mana flask. And we're going to do that by starting with a cylinder. But just to make things a little easier to work with, we will start by just hiding the geometry that is currently in there. So we'll hide the room geometry and hide the furniture geometry. We can see that I haven't yet added these to the furniture layer, so I'll just select them, go to my furniture layer, and then we'll right click on it and add these selected objects. And that will hide them because they're now in a hidden layer. Right, let's make a start on this flask then. So we'll create a new cylinder. And what I want to do is actually reduce this geometry very, very low, as low as we can get away with. So under inputs for poly cylinder two, we'll set the subdivisions axis to six which is not particularly round, but you'll see how this works in a little while. And then what we'll do, rather than adding extra geometry, because we're going to need some subdivisions on the height, we'll do this a bit more freehand using something called the multi-cut tool, which can be used to add additional edge loops. So I'm going to start with sort of getting the neck of the flask, and at the moment I just don't have enough edge loops. So in order to add one, I'm going to click here on my modeling shelf, which is the multi-cut tool. And you can see that as you move your tool around, it will kind of give you hints as to what it can do. But what we want to get a complete edge loop is we need to hold control on the keyboard whilst we're mousing over. And that will then show you where it wants to put the edge loop. And we want an edge loop that goes like this. And you can see I'm doing it on one of the lines that runs in an opposite direction to the edge loop that I want. So I'm going to put it about there. Nice. Right. I'll now just switch back to my scale tool, I think. And I'm going to right click on the shape and I'm going to go into edge mode. And then I will double click on this edge to set the whole loop and then hold shift and double click on the edge loop above it so that I get both. And then what I want to do is scale them in to make them thinner. If I do that, that's going to shorten the gap between them. I don't want to scale from the center. I'm going to use this manipulator here, which will scale on the X and Y. So I'm just going to bring that together to make sort of a neck of a flask like that. So now at this stage, I want to introduce you to something called Smooth Mesh Preview, which we can get to by pressing three on the keyboard. This gives us a preview of what our shape's going to look like once we have smoothed it. As we're currently working on the neck, I can see that at the moment, it's not really defined enough. And the way that we get more definition is by having more edges closer together. So I'll now press number one to get back into non-smooth preview mode, like so. And then what I'm going to do is get my multi-cut tool. I'm just going to zoom in on here, hold control, and I need to put some edge loops quite close together. And you'll see why in a second. So I'll put one there and then one at the other side. So these are just what I call holding edges, which will allow it to hold its shape. So if I now press three again for smooth mesh preview, you'll see that the top of the flask is now much more defined. We're getting a better change in the shape. What I want to do next is get a rounder sort of body to the flask. And in order to do that, I'm going to need another edge loop. So what I'm going to do this time is just press number two. And this shows me both the proper shape. So that's the one on the outside and the smooth mesh preview. So with my multi-cut tool on, I'm going to hold control and aim for somewhere in the middle like that. Then I'm going to double click on that edge to select the whole edge loop. And with my scale tool, I'm going to bring it out. And you should be able to see that that starts to round it off. And then with my bottom edge loop, just here, I'm going to bring that one in. And you'll see that that now gives me a rounder bottom. It kind of bubbles out in the middle and goes thinner at the top to give me an overall flask-esque shape. I think I'm just gonna bring out the middle a little bit more, like so. And then I'll press one. So this is the shape that we've created. It doesn't look very flask-like, but when we smooth it, it will. And we're gonna do that next. So you can see we've created what's gonna be quite detailed geometry out of very, very simple geometry. There are only one, two, three, four, five, six edge loops going up the height and only six going around. So working this way can mean that you can create geometry much more quickly and then you just smooth it to get the more rounded shape that you're looking for. 
So before we smooth then, let's just go into face mode and I'm going to turn off my multi-cut tool and I want to select these faces on the top because I want this to be able to be open. It doesn't always matter so much this, but because I want to add what's going to be a fairly detailed glass shader later, I want it to behave as I would expect glass to behave. So we could select these six edge loops just by holding shift and selecting them one at a time, but I want to show you another method which can be really useful. If you hold tab on your keyboard, you'll see that you get this little tool that pops up and if you just click and drag, it will allow you to select all of them really quickly. And then you can just press delete on your keyboard and they're gone. Right, into object mode and we are going to do mesh and smooth. So this is now going to smooth it, which we will get in the preview of when we press three. So let's press that and you can see this now smooths it out. You can see that the top is working out quite well and the silhouette around here is fairly round, but it could be rounder. So what I'm going to do is instead of having just one division, I'm going to subdivide it again and we'll have two. And that now makes everything much rounder, much more smooth and something I'm happy with. So that creates our first bit of the flask. So we're going to go into object mode, jobs a good one. Now we need to name this. So we're going to call this flask glass. And now you've got an optional step. Mine, because I created it at the origin, is already zeroed out. So I don't need to freeze transformations, but let's just say I create it slightly off center for some reason. It's gonna be important before we do the next step to make sure that we freeze the transformations. Everything needs to be zeroed out. So we'll do modify, freeze transformations, and you'll see why in a second, because we're gonna duplicate this, move it out, make a change and move it back in, and we need it to go exactly back in the middle. because we're gonna create the liquid that goes inside. We will first of all duplicate this flask with Control and D and then move it out of the way. I'll rename this now to Mana Liquid, I think, so that I can differentiate that from if I do, let's say, oh, in fact, no, what's, maybe not Mana. I want this one to be Health, it's gonna be red. Health Liquid. Then, going into the for view by tapping spacebar and then into the front view in this case. I need to be able to see this shape side on. I'm gonna right click to put it into face mode and then you'll need to decide how full you want this flask to be. So I'm gonna have this one be quite full. So I'm selecting all the geometry to delete now, the rest's gonna be how full the flask's gonna be. So delete that, lovely. Back into object mode and back into my perspective view. The problem with this liquid now is that there's a hole in the top and we want the shader to be applied everywhere. So we need to fill this hole. Maya has a lovely little tool for this. It lives in mesh and it's called fill hole. So we'll give that a click and that just creates some geometry to fill that hole at the top there. And now we put this back inside the flask by changing translate X to zero. You can see that is now inside or sort of in line with the flask. We're gonna add some thickness to the flask to make sure the liquid appears inside, which we'll do now. So select the flask. We're gonna do an extrusion, so I'm gonna hit Control and E. And then we need to add some thickness. So, if we just go out a little bit, so I can see that 0 0.2 is far too much. I think 0 0.1 will be as well. Yeah. So we'll try 0 0.01. That's probably not quite thick enough, so we'll try 0 0.02. Hey, that'll do it. So that now adds some really nice thickness to this flask. I think what I'll want to do is just go into object mode. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna add a bevel to the top edge just to soften it a little bit. So we're gonna go to edge mode, double click on the outside edge, hold shift, double click on the inside edge, control and B for bevel, and that's just gonna smooth it out. I'm not gonna do any more to it, that will be fine. The final piece of this particular puzzle is going to be a cork stopper that sits in the top to stop all the magic getting out. So that's going to be a new cylinder. Ah, I've created an issue for myself. So I'm gonna to have to put a little bit of thinking into getting this cork in the center because I moved the, the flask over so I could show you why we were freezing the transformations, but it'll be fine, I'll work with it. So first thing I'll do is just rename it to cork. I'm going to Drop the subdivisions down because we don't really need any more than 12. And there we go. So subdivisions axis becomes 12. 
scale the whole thing down so that it's roughly the right size and shape and then we will try and just get it so that it lines up with the neck of the flask and then we'll just raise it above a little bit and I want it to be thinner at the bottom than it is at the top I'll do that by putting it into vertex mode selecting them and then scale them into the center not create that kind of slanted look and then into edge mode I'm going to double click on the top edge hold shift and double click on the bottom edge control and B to add a bevel I think I'm going to put two segments on this one and just drop the fraction down to 0.1 and now we probably go into the top view to get this position so let's just zoom in on this that actually is pretty central I think so I'm not going to worry about that and we will just drop it in place in a side view I think I'm going to have to scale it up a little bit to make it look like it fits. Oh, too far. We don't want it to come through the glass. That's important. So I think somewhere it's not very central, is it? No, it is not. So let's just get that more into place. That should do it. Not quite. Yeah, okay, so now we have our stopper in our little flask. So we have three pieces of geometry, all of them should be named. So I've got my liquid, my glass, and my cork named. What I want to do now is just make sure that they all belong to the same thing. So I'm gonna use a method now called parenting. Instead of creating a group to act as the thing that ties them all together, one piece of geometry becomes the parent for the rest. So in this case, I'm going to select the liquid and I'm doing it in my outliner because it's difficult to select the liquid now that it's inside that geometry. So select the liquid, shift select the glass. So you select the child first and then the parent. I'm going to go to edit and parent. And you can see that this creates a hierarchy for us so that when I select the glass and move it, the liquid isn't left behind that's also gone with it and we now just need to do the same for the cork so select the cork and I'm going to do control and select to get the glass and that's because I don't want to also select the health liquid if I did shift and select it would select all three so select the cork control select glass and then I'm just going to press P which is the same as the menu item and now anytime I select the flask everything's going to go with it and just to finish this step off we'll get it put on the table so with it selected let's bring back our furniture which is just going to be the table for now and let's bring it up above the table and it's a bit too big so we'll scale it down that was like a nice size and let's just place it on the table somewhere I'm going to put it over there for now beautiful that then is the end of this step. The next step is another challenge. So I will see you in that next step so that you can put your skills to the test. Game Dev Academy is graciously supported by these absolute legends. If you'd like to offer your support, then check out our Patreon page using the link in the description below.